All right. Welcome back to episode two of Binging on Broadcast. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on our kick out mic. Uh, last episode, we spent a good 20 minutes dialing or diving into everything kick in. Um, now we're going to see the other the other side of that kick drum, the kick out mic. Where's the kick out mic? Well, it's out or close to outside the kick. It's usually the one that's kind of stuffed right in the hole in the port on the front of the kick. Um, and this mic is going to get get you kind of the most low end content. Um, it's going to be the body of the kick drum. So there's not too much attack out of it. Um, there is some, but most of the, for the most part, it's kind of the body. All right, so let's jump in. All right, um, so first, let's just solo up this kick out mic. Hear how it sounds. This is raw, right off the mic, no processing. Okay, so kick out. As you can see, right off the bat, here's kick in to compare. Woo! And kick out. Okay, so quite a bit less attack, less high end. All right, it's kind of has a boxy sound to it. Um, so let's let's treat a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an EQ. EQ is my favorite. All right, now um, I kind of hear. kind of the coconut, I call the the coconut frequency, but the lime and the coconut. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, but that's going to be around your three to 400 range. Okay, so let's find it here. I'm going to spike it. Yeah. Kind of there. And I'm going to pull it right out. Great. Good. Okay. Clean, clean, cleaned out the boxiness or the nasaliness, if that's even a word. I don't know. Nasaliness. We'll make it a word. Okay. Now, because I did that, I'm hearing some some upper mid or kind of mid mid uh, things happening. Kind of this area. Kind of the wood. Kind of sounds woody. Like in Toy Story, Woody, our good friend Woody. Yeah, kind of there. Okay, so I'm going to pull that as well. We don't want a wood kick. I mean, it is wood. But we don't want it to sound like a wood. Like you're hitting a log or something. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so kick out um it is mostly a lot of low end kind of the body however there is some high end in there and i don't want to disregard that okay um i want to bring it out a little bit yeah kind of that that nice nice kick there is some smack in there um cool all right so that's a good starting place for the kick out now again i'm only hearing the kick out so let's see what happens when we add the kick in to this. Here's just kick out. With kick in. Cool. Sitting pretty good. I, I kind of really like it. So... Um, the next thing I'm going to do now that they're both in and I hear them together is let's take a look at this low end. All right. So I'm going to start with the low end on my kick out mic. Um, and I, it, it really will depend on the type or, you know, the kick drum itself and what it sounds like. But my ear currently is telling me that, and this is fairly relatively common. I like to kind of push, lightly push the kind of 80, 90 low end of of uh, I'm, I'm sorry the 50 60 low end of the kick out which is like the real subby 
Um, you know, think of like Dr. Dre or like, you know, homeboy rolling down the street with his subs in his car, like that, that frequency. Okay. That's really nice in the kick out a lot of times. And then I'll kind of find just above that, the 90, 80, 90 range on the kick in mic. Okay. That is the chest frequency. That's, you know, that's really kind of the the power of the kick drum in a mix. That's going to speak really, really well in a congested mix is that 80, 90, that, that chest, uh, you know, that's the drive is right there. The sub is also cool, but it's not going to be nearly as drivey. It's not going to be as powerful sounding. Um, and that's the kind of thing that will get kind of lost in a mix. Um, so it is important, but uh, when in a congested mix, that 80, 90 is really the low end that you're going to be able to kind of uh, more easily get out of your kick drum than the lower stuff. Okay. So let's start with a kick out. Uh, I'm going to pull that 60, 50, 60 area. And when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. Okay. I'm talking a little bump, you know, two, three dB maybe. Um, however, I have to understand that right now I'm only hearing the kick. So there's plenty of room uh, for all that low end content. Okay. I have to keep in mind that I'm, there's a lot of other tracks that are going to need those frequencies. So I can't go nuts with it, even though, you know, my mind is telling me, yeah, but my body, I'm just kidding. I don't know where that came from, but uh, I have to keep in mind that low end of the mix needs needs this area too. So I'm not going to go too nuts with this. Okay, so here's a kick out, kind of down on that 60. Okay, perfect example. I just goosed this 12 dB at 60, and it feels great. By itself, it's like, oh, yeah, that's that's you know, it's really gratifying. Okay. But this is absolutely nuts. I'm just going to tell you right now, this is a far too much of a boost. When I start adding bass and low synth and everything else that's going to be down there, this is just going to clobber over everything and I won't hear any detail in all those other tracks. So reserve yourself, calm down, calm down. I'm going to do just a little, you know, four. All right, I'll do four. Four dB bump at around 55, 60 hertz. Okay. Now I'm going to go up to my kick in mic. Uh, and I'm going to push around uh, just above that. So the 80, 90, the tight kind of chesty, uh, chesty area. Okay. So that's here. 80. Goose it. Same thing. That's 15 dB. Out of control. But it feels good right now. But again, control. Control yourself. Yeah, right around there. Okay. So together, they work really well together. Here's kick in by itself. Real papery, smacky. Here's kick out by itself. A lot of body, a little bit of smack, mostly body. And together, though, a lot of good content in there. Cool. Okay. There we go. We have the kick in. We have the kick out. That's all I do. I, you know, maybe I'll get into some compression on kick out, uh, but... Not all the time, and most of the time, to be honest, not. Um, with that said, let's dive into uh, kind of how I treat these two together. Okay, so thus far, I've treated these separately, right? I've kind of thought of them as two separate entities. Now let's think of them combined, all right? A nice, happy kick drum family, okay? Um, so in order to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bust them together so I can treat them together. Okay, so you can see here my kick in and out are going out bus one. And then I have a, a bus track or aux track, however you want to call them, whatever DAW you're using, they call them a little something, but I'm, I'm routing them together. 
the input's bus one, okay? So now they're both coming through this track, okay? Um, another pointer here, this is a good spot where gain staging will bust you, okay? I'm combining two channels into a mono uh, path. There's a good chance that combined, these are gonna clip something out because I'm, they're, where I'm adding sound on top of sound. So watch your gain here. If you're clipping your uh, kick bus, you need to bring both of these down respectively. So you're getting healthy, but safe levels on your kick bus, which looks pretty good here. And then I'll look at my, my output volume of this aux track and look at my master fader. We're looking pretty good there. If it were low or hot, I would bring it down here, up or down on my aux track. Okay? Not individually. Because if I start processing this, if I start moving these individually, it's going to affect what my processing is doing, especially compression. It's going to really change your compression if all of a sudden I lower these. Now, now I'm compressing less. Uh and I'm not getting what I want, okay? All right, so now they're bust together. So the first thing I'm gonna do, whether I do it or not, I usually always add this, um, is an EQ, okay? Um, I like to EQ these two together, all right? However, I'm not gonna jump into this EQ just yet. This EQ I like to think of as my stylistic EQ. It's how I want the kick drum to sound in the thick of the mix, all right? So right now it's a little premature to start adjusting this. I might touch it a little bit, but really I'm going to kind of wait until I get a lot of the other instrumentation. And this is, this is kind of EQ where it's a quick and easy way to be like, you know, I want my kick drum to cut a little more. I want the low end to be a little more chesty as opposed to subby. Um, it still sounds a little boxy. I'll reach for this EQ and just... Uh, quickly make those adjustments to make whatever adjustments I need happen without having to get into the ratio of these two and the processing of these two separately. Okay? It's also a really easy place for me to turn volume up or down on the kick. A lot of times when you're in a mix, you're like, you know, I just want my kick drum to be louder. Okay? Rather than trying to bring these two up respectively and potentially affect your bus processing, I can just bring my bus output up or down. All right, capiche, capache, cool. Um, all right, now, this is where you can kind of get into some compression too, okay? I'm squishing these two together a bit, all right? So I'm going to use, uh, I do like to use impact, the same same one I use on the kick in mic, um, but I also like to use the 11, any 1176 model, um, 1176 has a cool just kind of glue factor to it um, that I really like. So let's pull that up just for a change of pace. Okay, this is Pro Tools model. Uh, there's a jillion out there that all, you know, get you probably similar results. Okay, um, so let's just hear it. Now, I usually like a relatively medium attack. Uh, because I don't want to I don't want it too fast where I'm destroying my attack, but I don't want it too slow where it's like not it's not even touching the the compression. The compression is having happening after the attack or after the whole kick drum. So somewhere in the middle, sure, five. We'll say five. And then my release really fast. Okay, so it lengthens, it gets out of the way, and it's not compressing the back end of my kick drum. All right. I'm making my kick drum last a little bit longer uh, by having a fast release. Oh, fast release. All the way up. Yeah. Cool. All right. So this compression did some did did a couple things. A, it's gonna glue these together a little bit. B, uh, it is making them overall a little more consistent. Okay, and by gluing these two together through compression, the sound, the tone of the kick drum isn't going to change as much from a lower velocity hit to a higher velocity hit, okay, um, which is a good thing. However, as compressors do, it thinned out a little bit, 
okay because the low end of the kick drum is the most aggressive and it's what the compressor attacks first, usually. Okay, however, this is where your uh, signal chain is real important. I, I don't want it to pull out that much low end, okay? But I like what that compressor is doing. So I could either A, address this EQ before the compressor. However, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to be like, you know, I want more low end uh, because this compressor has pulled it out. Okay, so I could add some low end here. But it's not doing all that much because I'm just shoving more low end into this compressor, which means I'm just compressing it more, okay? I don't want to compress it more. I like where my compressor's sitting. By adding more low end here, I'm just forcing my compressor to squish it more. So I'm going to put another EQ after this compressor, okay? Think of it, I'm kind of fine-tuning the tonal adjustments that the compressor just added, Okay? When you compress things, it does change the tone of that source. It's not an EQ, but it does shift the frequency content. Sometimes, a lot of times, it attacks the low end first, so all of a sudden you're left with a thinner sound. Sometimes it attacks the high end first, so it's, it warms it up, it dulls it. So, you know, a lot of times I'm throwing an EQ after my compression to fine tune the tone a little bit. Okay, fine tune the tone that the compressor has has added or changed. Okay, so for me, what popped out is a 1K because I that compressor stole some of my low end. This now that 1K area smack uh, seems like it's uh, it pokes out a little bit more now. So I'm gonna take care of that this area. Yeah, something like that, and then uh, a little bit, a little bit low end. Yeah. So I've kind of bumped it around a hundred. That's that chesty, chesty area, and then just overall the subbiness of it up a little bit. Okay, so now I have a nicely contained, glued together kick drum with the two sources, and I've fine-tuned the compressed signal, if that makes sense. Okay, so you can see very quickly here that the order of my plugins or the, the chain of my gear is very, very important because, you know, everything feeds into the next. If you're tweaking one thing, it's changing everything after it. Okay, so really, really kind of put... You know, put some thought into the order of operations or the order of these uh, plugins and how they're influencing each other. This EQ after the compression is going to get me a lot further than trying to do it here um, and forcing your compressor to do things that it really doesn't need to do. Okay? And there we have it. Uh, end of episode two, kick out mic. Okay, it's really kick out slash kick bus, um, but that's the kick bus is, is an important part. So hopefully uh, that that taught you some stuff. A um, lot, you know. Hopefully there's not too much fluff in there. Um, I have a tendency to get fluffy, <laughs> if you know what I mean, in more ways than one. Uh, but anyway, uh, hope you guys enjoy. Like, subscribe, um, do all the things like I said last time that are important for social media growth. And, um, yeah, love you long time. Star Swipe out.